So in order to do live AR for broadcasts, we had to create our own version of the Unreal Engine that we're calling Frontier. Frontier is giving us broadcast video input and output of the engine itself. Uh, we do this with an Aja Corvid 88 or Kona 4 card. Uh, we also need to implement camera telemetry into Unreal Engine also. Uh, we do this, our camera telemetry system is a Mosis Star Tracker system. So we have a bunch of small reflective dots that go up on the ceiling of, in the studio. And there's actually a sensor picking up all those dots so we can know exactly where the camera is inside the studio at all times. Um, we also have imp implemented an internal composition plane with color grading and tone mapping into Unreal Engine um, so that we can change the, the lighting on the actual talent themselves that are in the virtual environments to actually match the real world. Um, our external keyer is using a Blackmagic Ultimat. Uh, and we've also spec'd out two Silver Draft supercomputing PCs for um, with an NVIDIA Titan V. We use 100, 128 gigs of RAM for the EXR sequences of the tornado itself, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And we also implement an internal AR compositing where we're going to take in the broadcast video from the camera and be able to overlay the augmented reality items on top of it. One of the first things we did for this was we had to scan the entire Weather Channel Studio 9 for this. Um, we needed this for the destruction shots and some of the, and the aftermath transitions that you saw at the end of there. So we took a LiDAR scan of the actual studio itself and used the point cloud as reference for rebuilding 3D geometry. Um, our textures were based on reference photography with, that was projected into the substance in Mari. Um, we used end up using 2K plus textures of all objects, and another effect of using having a virtual studio is so we could check our camera and lens calibration and know that our AR items are going to line up with actual items inside the studio itself. Um, one of the re going along with that, we we're able to do some little subtle effects that integrate the AR items a little bit better inside the studio. For example, the shadow catchers on the floors and the walls. As the telephone pole is falling into the studio, we're able to cast shadows on all the different surfaces of the wall and the floor, real time and live at the same time. Um, and also as the car crashes in, we're able to have the gasoline from the car wrap around the wall, real world walls inside the studio. In some cases, we actually just replaced the real wall in the studio with a completely virtual wall for the 2x4 destruction. So that as the 2x4 smashes into the side of the studio, we can actually have the bases fall off the wall and crash onto the floor. One thing that's a little bit different in the broadcast environment is, well, there's a certain script and a certain flow for um, the segment that they're going to create, is that your camera operator, they, they'll make certain decisions on the fly. They might work things out and change things on there. So when we're building out our virtual set, we have to make sure that when they zoom in anywhere inside the set, it looks full resolution. And so we use 2K textures everywhere. If you can zoom in on that little shelf in the, in the corner there, you can see all the books and all the thermometers all full resolution on there. And we can kind of afford to account for this because our scope is relatively limited. Um, we're not going to run out of texture memory because we're just doing a certain area of the studio. We're not doing real large environments. We used, um, uh, the Weather Channel wanted to do their monitor as a looking out as a window into the world. Um, so as the camera moved, they wanted to have depth and be able to see outside the window itself. Uh, another reason we didn't use a green screen for the monitor instead is because we wanted Jim Cantori to be able to react to everything as it was happening and see it on the monitor itself. So we, we used as an off-axis camera projection inside Unreal where the what's rendered on the monitor is being rendered from the position of where the camera is and we're able to track that through the Moses star tracker system. So as the camera's moving around the room and you're a person standing in the room and you're looking at the monitor, it's going to look very strange to you. But as, as you look through it through the actual view of the camera itself, it gives it a nice step that's you move the camera around the room. And we had to un modify Unreal Engine's camera projection through a plug-in to, to track that perspective. We also immerse the town with some practical effects. So as the talent is in the virtual environment, we want them to be able to reflect on the virtual items itself, such as like the puddles and the aftermath up on the left-hand side there, but also the other way around. 
we want the AR items to affect the town and the studio itself. So we're able to hide physical objects behind AR elements inside the studio to cast a shadow, for example, on Jim Cantor's head as he walks underneath the fake, the fake house. So it gives it a little bit more immersion, and it's kind of a simple practical effect. Um, I will show you now a quick version of the lightning explainer, which shows in our next one we did for the weather channel. Summer also brings thunderstorms, and they can ruin your outdoor plans and wreak havoc. Whoa! Oh, man! What just happened there? That was crazy. But let's back things up just a little bit here to try to figure it all out, okay? But did you know that lightning travels at over 250,000 miles per hour and can contain up to 1 billion volts of electricity? Now, lightning can heat up to over 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's five times hotter than the surface of the sun, and this is what causes the pole to explode. All of the moisture inside the pole instantaneously vaporizes and expands. The force is powerful enough to obliterate the wood. Now, when this happens up in the sky, the air is heated and it expands violently, producing a shock wave that we all hear as, that's right, thunder. And since light travels faster than sound, we see the lightning flash right away, but we don't always hear the thunder. But you can tell how far away lightning is by counting the time between seeing the flash and hearing the thunder. For every five seconds, the lightning is one mile away. The sooner thunder is heard after the flash, the closer the strike is and the greater danger you're in. So it's always good to remember, as soon as you hear thunder roar, you should be headed indoors. That strike, about 2.4 miles away. But lightning can travel far away from a thunderstorm, and in some cases, more than 30 miles. And it doesn't even have to be raining where it strikes. And lightning strikes the U.S. a lot about 25 million times a year. July is the deadliest month for lightning strikes, and Saturday is the deadliest day. People are outdoors more on weekends and in the summer. And even if you're at the beach or in an open field away from a tall object, there is still a real danger, and you don't even have to be hit directly by the main bolt. Oftentimes, lightning has several streamers that branch out and hit objects on the ground, and those objects can transfer the electricity, which is like these streamers here. And while metal objects don't necessarily attract lightning, they're really good conductors, and this fence is a great example. Electricity is transferred to anything in contact with it, and this is known as conduction. This is also a threat if your house is struck. And while you're much safer inside your house during a thunderstorm than outside, there are a few precautions you should take. Don't touch electrical equipment like computers, TVs, or anything that's plugged into an outlet. And you'll also want to avoid plumbing. So hold off on that shower. A good rule of thumb is to wait half an hour after the storm passes before going back outside. These tips will help keep you safe when you know a thunderstorm is headed your way. And for those times when lightning strikes without warning.